Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today is totally technique based. We are going to be using the um, Big Time Kindness Stamps and Dies and then we're using three different 3D embossing folders. We are using the Dogwood Blooms, the Spring Medley, and the Clover Petals. We are also trying three different techniques to do this technique. <laughs> so I had this idea quite some time ago. Um, I had done a video about adding ink to your 3D embossing folders, and I really super enjoy um, the contrast of uh, rainbow colors or vivid colors with uh, black and white. And so I'm always kind of like looking for ways to up the drama of my cards. Um, and so I had this idea to to do the 3D embossing with a black uh, pigment ink, and that is what we are going to try today. So here, this is the watercolor background. I'm using my Karen uh, Brush Marker Pros to just scribble down some watercolor. You can use whatever you have. I think this would be a great one for um, the Distress Ink watercolor pencils. Would probably work fabulous for this. Now, I want to be very clear here that I am not trying to make this look pretty. So I scribbled down some color, I sprayed it, and the reason that I'm not trying to make it look pretty is because I wanted to see how effortless I could get something I was happy with. Um, and hence the reason why we're trying three different techniques. Um, here I was totally ill prepared. I did not have a clean water cup. And so I'm using one that is <laughs> dirty. I'm using one that's dirty. Um, just because I needed a wet paintbrush just to kind of move the water about. Uh, and I wasn't super thrilled with the way that this background came out, but again, I didn't put a lot of effort into it, so how mad can I really be? Um, so I dried it down. I apologize for bumping you there. I dried it down, and it wasn't too bad, but it wasn't as bright as I wanted it to be, so I decided that I was going to go back in with the same colors. Um, and I probably, honestly, I tried to probably to too many colors in here. Um, and so I got a little bit of muddiness, which is my own doing, but I didn't like, as you see us create these backgrounds, which are not pretty, just again, to reiterate that <laughs> I'm not trying to sell these <laughs> as something that is beautiful to start. Um, but I wanted to see how we could create something at the end of it that we were going to be happy with when we weren't necessarily happy with where we started. Because a lot of times I think as card makers, when we run into these roadblocks um, or maybe we're not happy with the way the initial background came out, we just stop and you have to push through. You have to push through it. And especially with watercolor, like it's always ugly until it's pretty. Um, that's just the way that it works. And if you think that your watercolor is ugly, let it dry, walk away and come back to it. And you'll probably be surprised at how pretty it is. So here, um, I just set that aside to dry. And now the next way I'm going to try it is with Copic markers. You should have very juicy markers to do this. If you do not, um, you probably want to refill beforehand. So you can see as I'm scribbling down my color that I'm getting a lot of white showing through. Um, and I'm making absolutely no attempt to blend these whatsoever. Um, not, not even kind of. And this actually, this card ends up being the one that I have to do the most work to afterwards, but it ended up being my favorite card that out of out of all the cards that we created and we're actually going to make five um so this one ended up being my favorite even though the entirety of the way until its completion it was my least favorite <laughs> um and that's okay that's totally all right so i i do want to say um in doing this process um, I came across um, another YouTuber and I will link to her video below because I do think that now she does it all with watercoloring and her approach to the technique is a little bit different, but her results are, are absolutely stunning. Her name is Sandy McIver. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I do want to give her um, credit and her video is... Um, we'll, we'll get there, what, what she and I do... Um, a little bit differently, but definitely worth the watch um, for her video as well. So anyhow, um, here I am just, this is like the easiest of the easy. I'm just taking ink pads and taking them direct to paper. Now, 
you could do ink blending with this, um, but I, as previously stated, like really bold color. And I didn't want to take all of the time to do a bunch of ink blending to get the perfect blend um, of a background I'd be happy with. I really, really wanted to try to start from... <laughs> This sounds so silly. To start from ugly and see where we could get with the technique. Um, and I have to tell you that, honestly, you could do any of these. So whatever your background is, even if you're like, meh, it's hideous, before you throw it out, maybe try doing this technique to see if you can salvage it. Because I think that they come out really very beautiful. Um, it's a little messy, but not a lot of effort. <laughs> not a lot of effort at all. So these are um, the th the three backgrounds. I don't, I'm not going to change them. These are what we have here. Um, this is what we're going to start with. And so the reason that I picked the 3D embossing folders that I picked is because one is a lot more open, one is a lot more detailed, and one of them is a repeat uh, pattern. So this one is the one that's a lot more open. I am using obsidian ink. It's a black pigment ink um, because when you're stamping, pigment ink is a lot more solid. And so it just made sense to me that that would make sense to ink with it. I swiped it on directly. You could totally use a brayer. Um, and then I'm going to get myself two little pieces of low tack tape. So I put my ink on, I put the uh, background on the other side, and then I'm going to tape these together super tight so that nothing is moving around when I'm running it through um, my embossing machine. So for me, I'm using um, the Spellbinders Platinum. That means the A plate and then my embossing folder, the adapter plate, and then mine is a little bit loose, so I use the shim as well. Um, and so here, this is just running it through one time. We're going to see what we get. I did not practice this before I shot the video. Um, this is all I'm learning right along with you guys as we are doing this, because I think it's important to see. So here, first time through, I'm like, meh, not great results. I could see there was a lot of ink left in the center, so I decided that I was going to do it again. So I didn't move my cardstock background out. I left it there, and that is on watercolor paper, by the way. I'm using Canson watercolor paper for only this one. The rest of it is Nina 80-pound uh, solar white cardstock. So then I'm going to close it back down, and then I'm going to run it through a second time, and running it through the second time, and you can see how it starts to get messy. So I'm, I've now, I've got this pigment ink on my fingers and I'm starting to fingertip everything. Like I'm just fingerprinting everything with my, <laughs> with my ink. So it does get a little bit messy. But this time I ran it through once and then I ran it back through um, out the way that it came. And I was much happier with the results. I think... This gave me probably the best results with the more open areas, um, was probably the best results right out of the gate. So here you can see we've deposited lots of black ink on there, um, and you can really see that design popping through. Looks super cool. I did want to show you here, I took my embossing folder to the sink and I just washed it with a baby wipe. I think I probably would have been able to get all the ink out of the crevices if I had had like an old toothbrush, um, but I just wanted to show you that like your embossing folders will not be ruined from this technique. I but I did not wait. I didn't let it dry on there. I took it to the sink immediately and just washed it with soap and water. Um, so now this is the Copic background with the spring medley. This is the one that is super detailed. And this is the one that was the most challenging. So again, I swiped on my ink pad put the cardstock in, taped it so nothing would move. And this time I learned from the first one that I liked the results better when I ran it through and then back out. So I did that. And the results are basically like I did not put any black in it at all. Like there's no black deposited. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it the second time. Maybe that's the, the trick. Maybe I got to, you know, I got to do it two times. I don't know what my camera was doing there, so I apologize. Um, I was like, maybe I got to do it two times. But really what I think it is, is that because that one is so detailed, there's just a lot more colored area to show through. There's a lot less black and a lot more colored area. And so consequently, if you don't get the black deposited, 
down, um, it's really hard to see. So now we did get better results with the second time around, but still not great. And that pattern, that hideous pattern is still showing through. Now, the last one is the watercolor one, and this is the Clover Petals. And this one has a good amount of open and solid areas. And so for this one, I did something a little different. So the first time I did it, I did it the same way I've been doing it. I swiped it on, I taped it, I ran it through, um, you know, the, with the same things that we have been doing. As you can see, my mat's getting more and more fingerprint, <laughs> more and more fingerprinted. Um, and so I ran it through and when I pulled it back out, uh, it was again, just a little lackluster. It just was. Um, it wasn't anything that was, um, like I knew I was going to have to do it a second time. So the second time is where I switched it up. And this time when I inked up the door, the flat side of the door, which I sh maybe I should have been clear about that. You want to be inking up the flat side of your embossing folders. Then I got the idea, well, maybe if I ink it like a stamp where I am consistently adding ink and it's adding a lot more ink, I will have better results. And sure enough, I was right. So the moral of the story is you want to use your pigment ink. You want to apply your ink like a stamp and then you get much, much better results when adding the ink to the folder, at least where it applies to pigment ink. So here is where we are, okay? This is where we are. You can still see some of those patterns that aren't that great. Now, this is where I, now this does not bother me in the slightest. I did not have to fill in all of the background in its entirety, but I did have to go in and touch up some areas to make them more solid black. This is, with Sandy's video, this is what she does the entirety of the time. She doesn't apply the pigment ink at all. She just goes in and starts coloring the background and has ends up with these beautiful results. So you can do it either way. If you're more comfortable coloring, um, then you can, you know, and you don't like the mess, then skip the pigment ink and then just go in and, and color up your background around the embossed areas. Um, I didn't, like I said, I didn't have to do the entire card. I just had to do, it was really more of the middle and maybe that's just the way my machine is. Like maybe I don't get as good a pressure in the middle. Um, but then if, you have smaller areas like this one, like this, and there's no way I'm getting in here with a Copic um, and not coloring something I don't want to. So I did go in with a fine liner and just kind of outline um, what I needed to outline and fill it in. This did not take a super long time, um, maybe like 10 minutes uh, to do the whole thing. It goes by really fast because the areas are so small. This also gave me, because I chose a fine liner that was safe for alcohol markers, it gave me the opportunity to then go back in and try to blend my colors. So now everything that needs to be black is black, but this pattern is still awful. So I'm going to go in with a few more Copics and see if I can kind of blend it out and salvage the pattern. Um, this worked-ish. Okay, this was not 100%. I probably should have chose colors, like that purple was too dark, I think. I should not have gone with such a dark purple, um, but that's okay. W when we're creating, this is how we learn. So I did go back in and try to blend it out to the best of my ability. It did not salvage the entire piece. The salvaging of the entire piece is going to come later when we do the details. So here, I'm going to be honest with you, I would highly recommend that you cut down your paper to whatever size you want it to be before you do this, because cutting the paper once it's embossed, especially with this kind of cutter, if you have a guillotine, it's fine. Then, you know, you can do it at any size and trim it down. But if you have a slider like I do, you can rip the paper. Uh, if you guys remember my, <laughs> if you remember my last video, uh, I totally ripped my paper. Um, but here, what I found is if I don't put a ton of pressure down and if I don't force it, like if it gets stuck, like here I was, it was kind of stuck. So I went in from the top and changed it and I was able to trim it down. Um, and sometimes it doesn't cut all the way through, but that's fine. It gives me that straight line that I can go in and follow with my scissors. So I cut down all of my panels and I was left with these little leftover pieces and I just couldn't bring myself to throw them away. So this is all of what we're working with. 
Here, I just wanted to show you, this is just part of my process. I like to go in, I like to look at them on black, look at them on white, see what kind of background I wanted. And for the majority of them, actually I think for all of them, except for one, I matted them. So if I put it on a white background, I matted it in black. If I put it on a black background, I matted it in white. These are all scraps that I have from other projects that match the colors. And so I'm gonna use these scraps. Uh, I always encourage you to use what you have. And so I've trimmed them down. They're each a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to apply them to just some white rectangles. And I'm going to turn these into backgrounds so that I don't have to throw away my extra pieces. Now, again, I am learning right along with you. So when I first did this, I didn't realize how much of a gap would be created between the flat cardstock and the raised embossed cardstock strips. So I learned that I need to go in and kind of outline that in black um, so that you can't see that little white portion. Um, and you'll see that when I put the second one together, that like that was something that I learned. I also learned um, that like I could go three colors and then I needed to put them in one of those background strips because if I used all the colors that I had, I was only gonna have one background strip and I didn't want that. I wanted to showcase the background strips and the colors are just supposed to be the supporting actors. So I just stacked them up in you know rainbow order when i got to what would be the fourth strip i swapped it out for one of the embossed ones um and you just want to make sure especially with the corner pieces because they can be very tiny um, that you're putting down lots of adhesive to make sure that those are staying and then before you turn anything off you want to make sure that your adhesive is completely dry so i'm using the honeybee um, be creative precision glue and i had no issues with them sticking um, just making sure everything was again dry and really securely adhered especially on those corners so then once that's done, I'm going to flip my rectangle over. I'm going to then trim off um, the excess so that I have a nice, neat, clean rectangle design um, for my card front. And then any of the bigger, I'm just being honest, like, because you guys know I'm cheap chicken. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Uh, that's me. Um, any of the bigger pieces, like that big pink piece, like I just save them and set them to the side and I use them on the next card if I could get them to fit. But isn't this so cute? To me, it feels so tropical. Like, I just, I don't know. I love it. So now on this one, I'm doing the diagonal in a different direction. But here is me learning from my previous mistakes. And I am putting down um, the black. I'm using a Copic, but you could use whatever black marker you have. We're just filling in that area that will be gapped. Um so that you're not going to be able to see the white peeking through. There wasn't anything I could do about the first one. And I mean, ultimately, I don't even think it was that noticeable, but I noticed it. <laughs> so once I noticed it, then I had to fix it because that's just how I, I roll. Once you know better, do better. So then we're going to build this one the same exact way um, and then trim that off as well. So now we're going to start building the cards. I did not add any dimension to any of these. Um, I glued them down flat because they had so much dimension from the 3D embossing. I didn't really feel like they needed anything else, but if you wanted that extra bit of dimension, you certainly could pop them up um, with some dimensional adhesive and that would be great too. So this is the only one that doesn't have a border and it's because um, I was the background I was the happiest with and so I wanted to keep it in its entirety. And this is actually the one that we did the ink pad swiping. That was um, the Dogwoods was the ink pad swiping and I think it turned out beautiful. It's not perfect. The colors aren't perfect. The ink blending isn't perfect, but I don't think it matters at all. Like guys, I really, I don't, I don't, I'm clapping. I'm sorry. Like I really don't think it matters at all. Um, which makes me so happy because that means that this look, this wow design is achievable for any card maker level. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or expert, this is totally achievable for you and you get beautiful, beautiful backgrounds. Um, so here I just, this is me just doing the matting. I like to adhere them down into one corner. So I have two of my corners that are straight and then I put them into my trimmer and I trim off the other two sides. And that's what I did for all of them. I also, for my sentiments, I did some that I stamped um, in our white 
uh, pigment ink and then heat embossed on black. And then there's some that I did um, black ink on white and then cut them out with their coordinating dies. So I did both of them and I cut out more sentiments that I needed, but that's okay. I just tuck them into the envelope and I'll use them next time. So now with this 30 minute video, will there be story time? A little bit. So, um, we talked before about how I had some traveling coming up and I did end up just making the decision to cancel one of my trips just because I feel like it's, um, it's a lot for my family. It's a lot for my husband, um, to have like three weekends, uh, in a row where, well, they're not in a row, but three weekends in a month where he's not, uh, gonna have any help for me, um, and it's a lot, you know, to, to be solo parenting for that many days. And um, also because the weekends that we were home, like one of them was Easter. So we weren't really spending any, I mean, we were spending time together with our family, but we weren't spending time together. And then um, this weekend I actually taught online. Um, so that was more time that was kind of like broken up that we didn't get to see each other. And so I, I did cancel one of the trips. But the trip I am still taking, I've had several people ask me this, will you be at Simon Says Stamps Create event? I will be. And so will Honeybee. I will be at their table for Saturday only. Friday, I'll be there um, kind of intermittently, um, just kind of like milling about. So I may see you on Friday, but on Saturday, I will be there. I will be doing the make and take that I uh, designed. And that's going to be using our new, um, it's the spring. I think it's spring seeds. So we'll be doing a little bit of Copic coloring in person at the make and takes. I would love to meet you guys. Please, please, please stop by. Do not be shy. Um, I would really, I, I would enjoy being able to meet you in person. And the other wonderful, like uh, Kelly Cahoo, uh, Lisa Serenos, we'll, we will be there um, at the Honey Bee table. And so I hope that you will stop and um, visit and have a chat and make a pretty card uh, and then, um, you know, enjoy the, the rest of your weekend. If you're not sure about the details, um, I can give you just some some brief ones. It's, um, I believe it's Friday, Saturday that it's open, possibly Sunday. I can't, I can't be sure. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't be sure. Um, and the it's a little bit different this year. There is kind of like a uh, a fee to do the make and takes if you're not, like still come even if you couldn't get into the classes, still come. It's worth it. Like I promise you, it is so worth it. They have a pop-up store there. They have all these make and takes that you can do, but it's $15 to get in. Or I think it's either 25 or 35 for the whole weekend. So like if you're local and you're like, hey, on Friday and Saturday, like this is what me and my crafty peeps are doing, you will definitely have enough to do all weekend. I promise you that. It is so, there's just so much. And for me, I get to see my friends, um, which is also an added benefit because that trip that I'm skipping at the end of the month is not business. It's a uh, pleasure. Like it would be me hanging out with my friends. And so one of the reasons why I was like, okay, like I can take a step back and not go to this is because I knew that I would be able to see the majority of them at Create. Um, April's just a busy, it's a busy craft month, y'all. And um, so, yeah, so I will be there. I am very excited. My wonderful husband will also be with me. Uh, my brother-in-law, his brother lives in that area. And so we will be able to see them um, and visit with them some and so we're we're very excited about being able to go do that. So yeah, super exciting times. So here we're I'm just going through and for some of them I did sub sentiments like the you're amazing thank you the thank you portion is the sub sentiment but for some of them I did not. I just felt like they didn't need it. So step to make them fabulous number 1. Shimmer pen like, we were going to get out of here without any shimmer or glitters. Get out. Like, who's, what? Whose video is this even? Um, so, yeah, I went in and I shimmered every single one of these cards. No shame. Now, we're going to glitter it. So, I shimmered some of the um, salad stripes with the pen. And then other of them, I'm going in. This is Stardust Stickles. If you watch my channel, you know that this is my favorite color of stickles because it m takes on the color of whatever is underneath it. And so I did go in and glitter some of the stripes as well. So some of them are plain, some of them are shimmery, and some of them are glittery. 
And honestly, for like a, hey, I made this out of my scrap pile kind of card, they're fantastic, if you ask me. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I'm pretty happy with them. Um, and then I also added glitter to the other embossed pieces. So to like the center of the flowers and the cards, I'm not going to show you all of them. And the same thing with like the clover, I added um, some glitter into the... Um, kind of middle of the pieces. Here's something else you can do to kind of bump them up a notch if you are interested, and that's go in with a white gel pen. You know I love my white gel pen. Like the white gel pen is, fan it's just a fantastic tool. So for the clovers, I went in and did some of the dots in white to help them kind of stand out. I think they look super fun. This was totally, the white gel pen was the game changer for the ugly card for the, this one right here. I could not break up that pattern of the color no matter how hard I tried. So I had to distract from the pattern and the white gel pen is what did it. So I went in and on the flowers, I just added a little white highlight, just a little like kind of white outline um, to each petal. They aren't necessarily connected, but adding this white outline totally breaks up the color pattern in the background and takes that Copic marker non-blended background from being meh to being okay hey girl like yes you are beautiful and so that is how this one ended up being my favorite one plus I couldn't leave the leaves out you know that so I went in and added some glitter to the leaves as well and truly this one ended up being my favorite card I just think she's so pretty um so now here's just, I just wanted to show you kind of each individual card and how they ended up looking with their shimmers and their glitters and all that jazz. Um, and at the end of the video, normally um, there's like a photo and it kind of fades out um, rather quickly. I did make that photo last just a couple of seconds longer so that you would be able to see all of them. But of course you can always view um, like the up close photos. Um, I always post them on Instagram as well. So I hope that you are super excited about this. I hope that you learned a little bit of something and it inspires you to get crafty and not give up on those ugly ducklings. They can turn into swans. They can surprise you. And thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.